All right, LinkedIn family, I'm hoping this is take two and it stays. I got some uh, notifications from my uh, from my live broadcasting platforms here that there are some latency issues and the internet is just dragging and it's causing me to, to miss out on getting my live going. So I'm hopeful that we can do this together again today. Let's try it one more time. Thank you for your patience. Some of you joined me a moment ago and hopefully we can do this again. It's 1215. Eastern Time, 12.15 Eastern Time, and uh, here we go for a second. Hey, All right, everybody, I am very hopeful hopeful that we can get through this here today. So I'm going to try to jump right in as soon as I possibly can here uh, with what I want to share with you today on this special edition of Sunrise Sunday, typically a moment and a place where I share with you uh, some things from my heart about uh, about the week or the month or uh, different things that have been happening in life. It's kind of not necessarily on, well, it's kind of, well, it's definitely everything I feel and, and, and passionate about in my call, but I focus in on some different areas on Sundays, and specifically meaning I bring in uh, the Word of God. I'm a follower of Christ, and I love Him desperately, and I share things that I feel would be of benefit to you, whether you're a follower of Him or not. Uh, some scriptures that bring hope, uh, point to light in life, and um, today is going to be a bit deeper than that. It's a, a, a deeper dive into what we're living in right now uh, with uh, coronavirus, with the things that are happening across this planet and what God has to say about it. Interestingly enough, today marks uh, the week called Holy Week. And uh, Holy Week is a very powerful week in the world of Christianity. It sets the stage for a lot of things that happened historically uh, when Jesus was on the planet. And that that uh, timeline is something that, that the church follows. And now not all churches go that far into the traditions of Holy Week, where they have certain things that are, that are done throughout those weeks leading up to Easter, uh, and some churches do. So I thought I would share with you some of those things, what they are, what they look like. Um, our church uh, here in Fayetteville Crossroads went online today, and uh, Pastor Chad did a fantastic job laying out, uh, like he always does, Holy Week. And uh, it really inspired me to, to press in some more as I had been praying all night long what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I will let you know, folks, that um, if you're not a follower of Christ, of course, I, I in no way intend to, uh, I can't say offend you, because I believe that uh, some of the Word of God is offensive to us, uh, specifically when we have areas in our lives where we're not obedient to it. Uh, you know, like, um, for example, when uh, the Bible says to not be jealous right? And sometimes we have jealousy in our lives, right? Good example, uh, sometimes when people are greedy and they uh, they choose greed and the Bible is very clear about what that looks like. So there's, there's truths that are in the Bible, whether you're a follower of him or not, that are real and relevant. And I want to share some of those things today uh, as we launch into what Holy Week looks like. And uh, for those of us that are followers of Christ, um, this, is a, um, this is a battle cry. This is this is things unfolding in history, uh, from history, prophecies of the past, things that have been foretold that are happening on our planet right now. So if you're a follower of Christ today, I encourage you to listen with more than just these, because there's something, something big about this that you should pay attention to. For those of you that don't, I love you, and I hope that you'll hear my heart for hope. I hope that you'll hear my heart for opportunity. I hope you hear my heart for eternal freedom. That's what today's going to be about here as we do a special edition of Sunrise Sunday. All right, so I'm going to go over here to a slide today because I don't know how long I've got on the internet, so I'm going to try to make it a little quicker, although it is a lot of information. If you would desire the slides, I will have those uploaded afterwards, which has a lot of the, well, everything I'm going to be talking about today, you will find um, here on the slides, all right? So, Holy Week begins. So what does what does that mean now for me as I'm uh, as I'm here on earth? What does something that was written down, you know, hundreds or thousands of years ago have to do with me right now? 
Good question. There's a lot that it has to do with you right now. And there's a lot of interesting things that uh, that are here for you to be able to to dig into what what it means about Holy Week. All right, so what what is Holy Week in Christianity? All right, so there's a week that's now, that's the 5th to the 11th of this year, 2020, April 5th through 11th, is the week that launches into Holy Week, which you will see there are five different things. Palm Sunday, uh, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. All right, so those are five, one, two, three, four, five areas of the entire celebration of the time of uh, Holy Week's beginning to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right, so we're going to walk through that timeline a little bit today, and I'm going to share some scriptures that are pertinent for the time that we're living in right now, things that address coronavirus right now, things that address the emotion of what people are experiencing in their lives right now, and the hope that is provided by the words that I hope you will hear today that will be a benefit to you. All right, so back here to the slide. Again, I'll make this available to you. And I got this one uh, from the uh, editors of Encyclopedia Britannica. So it's pretty easy to find, but I'll, I'll make it available to you as well uh, after the replay here. Uh, it says, Holy Week in the Christian Church is the week between Palm Sunday and Easter. It's observed with special solemnity as a time of devotion to the passion of Jesus Christ. Now, in the Greek and Roman liturgical books, it's called the Great Week, because great deeds were done by God during this week, all right? So it's a, it is a time of remembrance. It is a time of celebration. It is a time to, uh, well, when I said remember, it's also a time to, to find out what that means to you personally, because God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no difference. He's the same, right? We just happen to live in a planet that's that's dying. We made some big mistakes on this earth. Uh, everyone can agree that there's a lot of people that have made some bad choices, and it's caused us a lot of rifts over the centuries, and this planet is, is dying and in need of rejuvenation, in need of a savior, really. I mean, whatever your religion is today, whatever you believe, at the end of the day, Everyone's looking for, for a savior. Now, if you're not even a believer of God at all, no entity, you know, you believe in the universe or, or um, you know, greater power or not even that at all. You just think that we're hiccups or, you know, we crawled out of a swamp somewhere. I mean, whatever the case may be, everyone has a God. Whether you say it out loud or not, your God could be saying you don't have one, right? Your God could be... Um, Allah, Buddha, Jesus. Uh, there's there's so many different uh, people out there that have named God. And um, my desire today is to share with you from the perspective of Christianity and through the word of God that I'll share with you today, uh, what that means and why we as Christians celebrate this time called Holy Week, what that means for us today on this planet. All right. So, um, Hope that helps out a little bit. All right, so the name Holy Week was used in the fourth century by St. Athanius. He's a bishop of Alexandria and St. Epiphanius of Constantinia. Uh, Constantinia, I'm sorry. Originally, it was called only Good Friday and Holy Saturday. They were observed as holy days, but later Wednesday was added on a day when Judas, now Judas was one of the disciples of Jesus, and he's one that uh, ended up killing himself because he turned Jesus over uh, to be crucified. He, that's an whole other story. Uh, that's a whole other video, but that's who it was. And he plotted pay, to betray Jesus. And by the beginning of the third century, the other days of the week were added to what's now called Holy Week. All right. So uh, the pre in church concentrated its attention on the celebration of one great feast called the Christian Passover. For my, my friends and brothers and sisters in uh, the Jewish uh, faith, those that believe in Jehovah, then they understand what Passover is and the, the feast, right? So we understand what some of those things are. So this is from that time frame, right? Which is um, post uh, pre-Christianity. Then Jesus comes on the scene. Jesus lived to be about a little over 33 years old. He started his ministry, his work that really is what we're talking about now, um, at 30 years old. So about three years and, and some change, three years and a few months, um, he was... Uh, actively working miracles and and uh, speaking and traveling and doing all those types of things before uh, before all this stuff we're talking about now 
uh, occurred, okay? Everything that was foretold the Old Testament through the New Testament. So those things are, are occurring. So there are parallels uh, specifically with, uh, with Jewish faith and Christianity was specifically when it comes down to the Old Testament, right? So just the difference between uh, Jewish faith and Christians in that sense is that they don't uh, receive Jesus Christ as the true Son of God, the Messiah. Um, they consider him a great prophet, All right? So uh, there's just a little bit of difference there. But again, this is back to what Holy Week means in the world of Christianity. Just sharing a couple more things with you here about that. All right, so um, by the fourth century, the practice really began separating various events that were commemorating them on the days of the week on which they occurred. So Judas's betrayal and the institution of the Eucharist or Monday Thursday was implemented. And the passion of the death of Christ on Good Friday, his burial on Saturday, and his resurrection is what we celebrate in Christianity called Easter, Easter Sunday. All right. So Palm Sunday, if you can see on the slide, the green first one says Sunday before Easter. That's a celebration of Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. That's when they had the palm branches. He came in on a donkey. They were expecting, they, I'm talking about the people of Israel, were expecting, you know, a, a warrior king to come in to overthrow the government of Rome and Caesar would be defeated and they would have this kingdom with their king Jesus. Then enters a guy on a donkey. <laughs> so it kind of kind of threw some people for a loop back then, right? So this is what Palm Sunday. And then Monday, Thursday, now this is when we get back into Judas. It's the Thursday before Easter. It commemorates the Last Supper. It's when Jesus hung out with his buddies and they had a time together when he said, you know, guys, this is this is all wrapping up to a head now, and I am going to be crucified. This is it. And this is when people will now see the full power of who God is, who I am, the Holy Spirit, all that stuff. So then Jesus did that, and that during that period of time is when Jesus, Judas decided to, uh, to sell out Jesus. Now, he thought he was doing a good thing. He thought that he was trying to, to further the, the moment, like, okay, let's make this happen, because he was thinking kingdom, power, you know, all this kind of stuff. So in a, in his twisted kind of way back then, of course, you know, it's not in the Bible. This is just some stuff I've learned over the years through my readings and teachings. But you know, he basically um, thought he was doing a good thing. And then when it all started going down, he realized he screwed up and it wasn't what he was supposed to have done. And his, his faith was was not placed where it should have been. And unfortunately, um, it was so overwhelming for Judas he ended up hanging himself, killed himself, hung himself on a tree. Big moment. All right, so this is a big moment in the timeline of Jesus um, coming to uh, from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday. All right, so Good Friday, that's the Friday before Easter. It's the most solemn day of the church year. It observes the day that Jesus Christ was crucified. Him and two other guys on crosses during that time were crucified. Long story, another another episode. If you want to know more about the crucifixion of Jesus, I would be absolutely happy to do a, a, a chat with you and talk to you more about that and go through what that timeline looks like because there's some incredibly interesting information there, not to mention life-changing. All right, so anyway, that's um, Good Friday, Holy Saturday. Uh, Jesus had been crucified. He had been placed into a tomb which was owned by an extremely wealthy guy in town who ended up really loving Jesus and said, I give you my spot. So Jesus was put in this tomb, set up by some guards. Uh, that was Holy Saturday. Uh, a few of his folks come by. You know, there's a lot of emotion going on during that time because you, this is Jesus, their friend, their brother, their, uh, their savior, their hero. They're all in all, he's dead. He's in this tomb. The stones rolled up up against it, and he's gone. Now people are thinking, um, well, that was interesting. What do we do now, right? Um, they either had to lean on their faith and lean into what they had been taught and, and, and what they thought they had learned or, or run away from it. Um, so there's a lot of emotion going on there. Saturday, of course, was a big day. People were, were really... Um, you know, talking about it, of course, and, and trying to make plans and figure out what's going on. A couple of ladies hung out there. They were really distraught, sad to see Jesus gone. And then Sunday, big Sunday, which we celebrate called Easter Sunday, is when, uh, when the resurrection of Jesus occurs. The stone is rolled away. Jesus appears on the scene. Now the resurrected one who defeated death, hell, and the grave. No kid's story. That is, uh, that is a, well, it's factually proven. I mean, there are written records besides the Bible that show that these, uh, these 
instances occurred back then. And many different people from different religions and faiths have been arguing those points for years. Uh, this is where it comes down to your decision of who, who you'll serve, right? So, but today is more about helping you to understand what Holy Week is all about, all right? So this is the power of, of these moments behind Holy Week, all right? So next slide, what does this mean at a time like this? Because folks, we are no doubt facing perilous times in the world. And we are facing moments where people feel there is um, a void, an uncertainty. Um, they wonder about hope. They, they, what does tomorrow hold anymore, right? So people are really trying to get through these moments in life, and it's difficult for many people. That's why I want to share with you some things I think that could be helpful for you today. All right, I want to go with Second Timothy, and I'm going to start reading in the in the in the chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, I'm sorry. And uh, I've got several verses I want to go through, and I want to read these to you that I hope that will make uh, make some impact in your life and help you. Now, for those of us that are followers of Christ, I hope this empowers you, emboldens you, helps you to put feet to your faith, helps you to feel the truth and the power of God's word versus the news, the CNN, the Fox, the MSNBC, the whatever, uh, the neighbors, the grocery store line, the all right. So this is this is where I'm sharing to you some truths, absolute truth from the Word of God. Um, for those of you that are not followers of Christ, I hope that you'll be able to listen a bit because I think that uh, in the midst of things you you may not believe, you will find hope through some of the words that God shares with us uh, through through His uh, folks that you know helped us with the Bible and wrote it down. All right, so this is the word of God. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9. And I hope that uh, this is easy to follow along. I know I've thrown a lot of stuff out there fast, and I'm trying to do two things by by staying online long enough and uh, giving you information as well. All right, and now again, I'll make these slides available afterwards. All right, verse 1. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money. They'll be proud arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, having the appearance of godliness, good, nice, friendly, hope, together, we can get through this, all right, all this kind of stuff. So having the, the appearance of godliness, but, but denying its power, I will not, I will not 100% commit to this because it doesn't look good, or I can't make money by saying these things, or or it, it, it discredits my business if I go to these routes because all my other clients won't listen. Whatever, okay? I mean, there's a lot of things to consider here for those of us that are followers of Christ right now, specifically in the time that we're living. All right, it says, so um, having appearance of God is but denying his power. And then it says, avoid such people. Mm. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women. No slam against you gals. This is just some things talking about that there are folks out there that are vultures that are looking for opportunities to deceive you. Uh, it does happen to men and women alike. Now, specifically in this passage of scripture, uh, Timothy, who was uh, with uh, Paul, he was a young younger man. Paul was the one who wrote most of the New Testament. Um, he was basically a son to Paul. All right, so he was sharing some things here that were specifically pointing towards some of the women that were being, um, well, just um, talked to uh, in ways that they can be enticed, you know, sexually, um, monetarily, whatever. There's the people that were just creeping in and out. But in the application of today, it means that there'll be folks that are going to come try to mess with you and mess with your with your stuff, your your mind, your body, your soul. Okay, so getting back into this again, don't want to get too deep into this stuff. Uh, we can do that one on one. Should you like to do that? All right. So, uh, for those of among us who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. So they weren't just good sold out folks. They were people that were so consumed, so consumed with all the junk going on in their world at that time 
whether whatever it is, they were so consumed with all the stuff, and they they were so uh, sinful by trying to to get what they thought they needed or wanted by providing for themselves alternatives to things that would have been godly, um, trying to to put a band aid on the problem, and it got worse. It got much worse. All right, so they were burdened, led astray by various passions, always leaning, I'm sorry, always learning, and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Always learning, always learning, and never able to arrive at the knowledge of truth. Courses, programs, this system, that stuff. Now, there's nothing wrong with knowledge and, and information. I, I consume too. But at some point, you can't continue to consume because you will get so fat, you'll explode and die. You have to produce, right? There's consumption and production. And if all you do is consume, you never produce. And this is talking about a point where they were always consuming things, always trying to take in stuff, but they never really got to the full knowledge of truth because they never produced. They never put forward into action some things, right? But as Janus and Jammers opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding their faith, but they will not get very far, for their folly is going to be plain to all, as was that of those two men, talking back in the uh, Old Testament when the point of that scripture, that end part was about Moses, right? All right, so 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17, going to continue on in this scripture. You, however, you have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life. Now, this is Timothy speaking to the church. My aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Ichium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. I've been through some you know what? <laughs> I have been through some stuff. Folks, a lot of times we complain about our problems. Are you freaking serious? When's the last time you were whipped almost to death for the 10th time, 15th, 20th time? When's the last time you were treading water for days because the ship crashed and you were in rough seas and couldn't figure out if you're going to get make it to shore or not and drowned to death? I mean, there's some folks have been through some serious stuff for the cause of, of the gospel, for the cause of Christ. And I have no way mean to diminish your pain points. My point is, is that we all go through some bad stuff. We all experience death in one way or another. It comes to how we experience life. All right, so you follow my teaching. He says all these things. So indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Expect it to happen more and more. This is not scripture I'm, I'm interjecting. They will be followed. If you're a follower of Jesus, expect to be persecuted. I will be persecuted for doing this today. Expect it to get worse and worse. It's going to happen. All right, so, um, but as for you, continue in what you've learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you've learned it. Don't forget where you got the information, folks, and how from childhood you've been acquainted with sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. But, man, I, I wasn't a Christian when I was five years old. I just I just started, you know, give, give, doing this walk last year. Okay, well, then you're, you're a child then at that point. You know, we all start somewhere at the beginning, and we have to move through and grow, right? No matter what it is, in business, in life, whatever, you're, you're going to have to learn. So at some point, you are going to be childlike in your understanding of something. So whether that meant you were doing these things as a child and grew up in the church and now you're a follower of Christ and all these things, or you are doing it recently, or you're investigating, you want to know what it looks like, we all start somewhere. No one is better than anyone else. You know, I've been at this for a long, long time. I make a lot of mistakes. The only difference between you and me is that I've just got more time invested. And hopefully the time I have invested would be helpful for you because I want to share with things with you that I think would be helpful. Um, but it always has to line up with, with what I'm reading to you today, God's word. I'm just a guy. I make mistakes. So it always has to line up with the Bible. Always, everything, everything we do. Verse 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God or woman of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. That may be equipped 
for every good work. I want you equipped, my friends. That's why I'm doing this today. That's why Holy Week to me means something so much for my friends here on LinkedIn and for those of you on Facebook that are watching the replay. I, I want you to understand the severity of the time we are now living. It's a, it's a, it's a, a turning point for many. And it doesn't come as a surprise. <laughs> it doesn't come as a surprise, not at all. It's just interesting how it's all unfolding. All right, so uh, going back to some more scriptures here in Romans. I love Romans 8. There's so many scriptures here I could go on for days about, but Romans 8, a few that I'd love to share with you today in light of Holy Week. It says, verse 18, yet what we suffer now is nothing. What we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children they really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse, but with eager hope. But with eager hope. Mm, that's good stuff right there, folks. The creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. Because death, my friends, was defeated <laughs> when Jesus hit that cross. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. And we believers also groan. All of us folk down here, we're still groaning. We're still getting, having some tough times, right? We're still groaning. Like, really, when is this going to happen? What is going on? When is all the, what are all these things going to transpire? Some of us don't even think about it at all. It's time to start thinking. <laughs> it's time to start thinking. All right, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we, verse 22, for we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit, even though as a follower of Jesus, when he, when he went to heaven, he sent the one, the comforter, the Holy Spirit to our lives, even though, even though, even though, even though we have the Holy Spirit, within us as a foretaste of our future glory in us. He's the one that inspires me. He's the one that gives me what is, I'm not that good, y'all. I'm just not that good. Anything you good that you hear from me has come from him. I'm nothing without him. Just another guy who's had bad problems and issues in my life. And, but because of him, I've been able to endure things. You can too. You can too. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. A guy battling cancer, there's times I'm just like, can, when will this just end, God? I'm just so tired of certain things, right? When will this just, you know, there's times in our lives when you're like, when will this end? Can you relate? Right? And that's what the scripture right here is saying. When when will this end? For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day that God will give us our full rights as adopted children, including the new bodies he's promised us. <laughs> I won't mind a new one. Trade this one in. <laughs> I'm not, I got a trade up coming. All right. We were given this hope when we were saved. Saved from what? That's interesting, right? You hear that word saved? People think, oh, I give my life to Jesus. I'm saved. Yeah. You are from everything. Yeah. Will you have to endure stuff? Yep. Because being saved is a process, right? I'm not, I'm not fully saved until I'm dead. And then when I'm dead and gone, I'm really, it's over. I'm saved. It's done, right? It's like all the stuff's done, the race, the fight, the work, all the things that we have, all the, the intentions, all the, all the, right? Eventually, whew. Saved. Thank you, Jesus. Home run, made it there, we're done. Right? You know, done. That comes to that point eventually. But in the midst of that point, there's a lot of work that needs to happen. All right. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. Check this out, bottom of the page. But verse 25, uh, I'm sorry, verse 24, we were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. Verse 25, but... If we look forward, boy, every time I see butt in the Bible, that's a big old butt. I like big butts, and I cannot lie, because this one right here is a big butt, folks. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently, and we must wait confidently. There is a heavy weight in waiting. There's a heavy weight. But the, 
of the prize, the end result, mm, can't compare it to, to the weight. It's something else. All right, going on in Romans, right? 26 through 30. And the Holy Spirit, the one who dwells inside of us, who Jesus sent to us, the Comforter, our friend, who dwells us, the Spirit of God, the triune God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that can't be expressed in words. He's in us. So because of that, we have like a, uh, a direct connect, better than my Wi-Fi connection. I mean, it's, it's good all the time. It's, not, it's the best you can ever get, ever. Um, and, and we have this connection. And sometimes there's moments in our lives where we're just like, ha, ah, right? Or, you know, how many times can I pray about my pain or my fatigue or my cancer stuff or things that I have to endure right now in my life? Um, you know, okay, so let's skip cancer. Let's say, um, you know, your bills, you're not working right now or you're not getting a paycheck right now. You're wondering how things are going to, how things are going to work out. I mean, there's, there's a lot of times that we're waiting on things, right? So thank the Lord, the Holy Spirit dwells in us because that connection's there. Um, because I don't know all the time because I'm, I'm a human. So I have emotions and I, I can be clouded and tainted by things I think, uh, sometimes anger, fear, frustration. Uh, yep, it happens to me. And uh, you know, those things can hinder my clarity of mind, right? So uh, the best mindset program in the world is, is a spirit set, <laughs> and it's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what helps me with my mindset to know that I'm in link with, with what God wants for my life. And as I lean into the Holy Spirit, as I lean into listening to the voice of the Father, because he's not as loud as the mess on TV, um, but he's stronger and better. And when you can hear the voice, when you tune in, that's what the Holy Spirit's for, um, it really helps you to, to, uh, to, to engage with those things that are transformational in your life, all right? But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that can't be expressed in words. And the Father knows all hearts, verse 27. Um, the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything, God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. All right, now back up a second. It doesn't say that God made all the bad stuff. It doesn't say that God gave you disease. It doesn't say that God is laughing up there going, ah, you, it sucks for you right now, doesn't it? Ah, this is awesome. That's bull crap, all right? That's not how it works. That's our humanity. That's our, that's our problem, not his. That's the crap we got to get get out of our minds, right? That's not how it works. The Father knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Can't get any better than that. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God, everything, for the good of love, according to His purpose for them. I've been sharing with you several times Genesis 50, 20, one of my favorite scriptures, that what the evil, what darkness, what the, what the devil means for our destruction, God means for our good. All right, so it's not necessarily that God uh, imposed the the evil it's that evil exists and when evil does its work god can say all right whatever i mean i'll take that and do this how about that you know how about that <laughs> so i mean i'll take that i'll take the good side of the junk but if we dwell on the junk more than what the good can be if we live in despair if we if we live in lack if we live in loneliness if we live in how in the world if we if we live in a, a, a surrendered life to yourself, like, I don't mean that in a good way. I mean, like, you surrender to everything but but God. Um, because at the end of the day, all you talk about is all the crap. Um, so if all you're talking about is all the crap all the time, I don't know where the victory is in your life. I'm not hearing it. So to be able to trust in him is a completely different story, all right? Sorry, side note. All right, so, not sorry. Verse 28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose, for God knew his people in advance, duh, and he chose them to become like his son, like Jesus, chose you to be like him, so that his son would be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Verse 30, and having chosen them, he called them to come to him, and having called them, he gave them right standing with himself, and having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. <laughs> Are you serious? What are you fighting for? All right, if you are listening today and you say to me, I am a follower of Jesus Christ, I understand what you're saying, Matt, and, and I know Jesus, but you're not doing this stuff, my friends. 
It's time to step up. It's time to step up. No more games. Clock's ticking. Yeah, Matt, that's, people have been saying that for years. Yeah. When's the last time you saw the world shut down? Huh? When's the last time you saw the world shut down? <laughs> you think this is going to be the first time? You got another thing coming. Yeah, I'm sorry to say this, y'all. This is just the reality for all of you to listen. Shit's going to hit the fan. <laughs> Expect it. Here's the truth. Doesn't have to catch you off guard. It doesn't have to, to ruin your life. Sorry if I offended you with the word. It's just true. Folks, there's a lot more coming. And you have hope. You have hope. Here it is. There's more. All right. Verse 31. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, if God is for me, if God's for you, then who can ever be against us? If God's for me, who could be against me? Oh, they can try. Yeah. Creator of everything. You got something better than that to throw at him? No. <laughs> so I don't either. All I can do is trust him. All I can do is say in the midst of stuff that's just crazy, wacky stuff. Wow. Thank God if you're for me, who can be against me? No one. Nothing. No coronavirus. No lack. No, I don't know if I'm going to have a job. Nothing. If he's for you, who can be against you? Since verse 32, he did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. He loved you so, so much. Mm. I have two kids I love. I've got a couple other ones that I love that are that are not mine biologically, but I love them as much. I'm, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine offering my child up for somebody else to be brutally killed. I can't imagine the kind of of absolute massive love he has for you massive and jesus knew it too he didn't fight going to the cross he went his choice he made a choice because he loves you you're worth it all right Verse 33, who dares accuse us whom God's chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Verse 34, who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us. He was raised to life for us. He's sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand. Pleading for us. Pleading. You think you got nobody praying for you? Jesus Christ pleads for you. He says, come to me. You don't have to go through this alone. Why do you think I did this? He pleads for you. Verse 35. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with, with death, with coronavirus, with no job, no money, no income? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we're killed every day. We're being slaughtered like sheep. Folks, I'm telling you what, there are people around this world that claim Jesus Christ as Lord who are being murdered brutally every day, every day. I know some that have been murdered. It's happening. It's been happening. For those of us that live in Western society and you think you're safe, <laughs> praise God for that. Thank God for that. But I'm telling you, there's time coming. All right, verse 37. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Verse 38. And I'm convinced. I am convinced. Can you say, I am? 
convinced. If you're convinced, my friend, it's a big word. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Neither death nor life, angels or demons. <laughs> our fears, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Anybody experiencing some of that right now? Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever, bottom line, bottom of the page, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed, revealed in Christ Jesus. He came here to share that love with us, to show us what it means. He lived it out loud to the point of crucifixion and to the point of defeating death. Just because he was God doesn't mean it didn't hurt. It freaking killed him horrifically. His own mom he had to tell her, hey, it's me. He looked like a piece of freaking hamburger. Whipped, beaten, bloody, pulp, faced. Nah, man, come on. That's historical information. That's factual information. And it's truth. All right, a couple more things I want to share with you. I love Jesus, guys. I'm sorry. I just don't. Uh, I'm not sorry. I keep saying that. Thank you is what I should say for, for your time today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for those of you that don't know Jesus yet like I do, um, that can hear my heart, my passion here, and I'm hoping that some of these scriptures that I don't mean to to uh, destroy your life, but to help bring hope to it, all right? Hebrews 13, 20 and 21 says, Now may the God of peace, here we go, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May he equip you with every good work to do his will. He'll equip you. All right. So if you don't have certain tools and you're frustrated because you don't have the tools you need to do the work you're wanting to do, um, what tools do you have? Right? Quit, quit complaining about the tools you don't have. Quit fussing and, and worrying about what you can't do. And, and what is in your hand? What do you have? And what are you doing with it? It's a big deal. In your business, in your life, in your faith. It's a big deal. All right, so he equips you with every good work for his will that you may do what's pleasing to him. Right? Not me, because I'm going to screw this thing up. I'm going to allow things in my life to, to, to hinder uh, the ultimate goal of why Matt Crump exists on planet Earth. And, you know, selfish desires, ambitions, things of this nature. And is there anything wrong with having stuff? Is there anything wrong with, with wanting things and, and, and having, you know, ha you know hobbies? And no. It's when they have you that makes the difference. All right? So, so don't let them have you. It's not, not worth it. Hebrews 10, 36. I'm almost done, y'all. Wrapping it up at 45 minutes. We're almost there. All right. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. All right. This is not, not a suggestion. Hebrews 10, 36. Not a suggestion. All right. Write it down. Get the slide. Verse 36. You need to persevere. You need to persevere. So that... When you have, when you have done the will of God, not done the will of Matt, but done the will of God, you'll receive what he promised. It's yours for the taking. If you're on the, on the right seat on the bus. <laughs> All right, wrap it up. Here we are, Holy Week. Again, today launches a moment of time that many things are occurring, which is the best time on planet Earth to think about it right now. It's for those of us, especially as followers of Christ, <laughs> To understand what some of these things mean for us now. So those five areas, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. Now I'm not decreeing here for you to have to go through and do all kinds of 
uh, religious, you know, service things and, and whatnot. You can. I mean, there's ways you can do these things at home. You don't have to be at church to do this. It's great to be with a, a family of faith and do it. But, um, you know, if you're not, then there's ways you can celebrate this uh, in your home. And if you'd like to learn how to do that a bit more, I can, again, let's talk about it. I'd be happy to share that with you. You can do it. It's totally cool. All right, so that's the end of that slide presentation. I just finished that one up. All right, just a few things that I wanted to share with you today about Holy Week and um, and what, what it kind of means for us now as we are facing coronavirus, as we're facing uncertainty. Um, there is no uncertainty. I'm certain. I'm completely certain. Am I curious? Yeah. I'm curious. Um, I'm real curious. And and I try to take what's going on around the world and different people's lives and things they're saying and doing and, and uh, uh, situations, circumstances that are, that are happening and wonder what that means for me to live out. How am I supposed to do this? And that's why today, you know, first time ever on LinkedIn, I've spent this much time straight in the gospel of Jesus. And... Um, I mean, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. It's because of him that I'm alive. It's because of him that I have what I have. It's because of him that I'll live forever. I'm not ashamed. And there are perilous, perilous times ahead. Folks, I'm not here to tell you that everything's going to be all right. Um, in the end, it will. But on this planet, expect persecution, problems, circumstances, situations. Expect to have to to really stand for what you believe in. And I just want to ask you, are you firm in what that is? Are you willing to, to die for what you know? Is it something you're willing to give your whole life to? Your whole life. Putting it on the line. Because it's a big deal. This is that time. These are those moments. The creator of the universe the one who's made it all, foretold from Old Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, prophecies that have been foretold, Daniel, Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah, Malachi, through to Revelation and some of the New Testament as well. Folks, those prophecies have mostly all been fulfilled. We're living in a time where we have to be serious about who we believe in and what we stand for. When it comes down to your business practices and your your future, you know, it, it all hinges around there. I would hope that people would see that because of my faith, because of who I am. See, I'm I'm a I'm a follower of Christ first. I'm not an author and a coach, consultant. I mean, these are things that I say in my titles on LinkedIn, but you know, I'm I'm first and will always be a follower of Jesus, who happens to be uh, the author you you know about, the the coach you know about, the consultant you know about the guy with the flip you know about somewhat um it all hinges around him nothing i do is without without him nothing i do is without prayer about what i say and do oh i screw up now okay I, I, I guess i should say that there's times i make mistakes for sure but uh, i try my best not to i hope you do too all right folks this is this has been a little little special edition today on uh sunrise sunday and uh, we're at our closing point. I hope this has been uh, informational for you. I hope that it has been inspirational for you. Uh, for those of you that don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I will say, He loves you so much. And you don't have to, you don't have to uh, wonder or worry about the junk that's going on in this world. It can affect you. It could kill you. But if you know where you're going, if you know why you're here, it just is what it is. It's stuff. Right? I want people to know who he is because he loves you. Not because I want you to be won over to my religion. I give a crap about that. I want you to know him. I want you to know love and hope in ways maybe you've never known before. There's only one way. The Bible says that he's the way, the truth, and the life. If you want that, hit me up. Let's talk about it. All right, folks, Holy Week starts this week. This is Holy Week. And I hope that it's been 
uh, informational for you to understand some of the things about the traditions of our of our faith and Christianity and what it looks like from this moment until we celebrate Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus, where he defeated death, hell, and the grave and gave you the opportunity for life abundantly and forever. All right, again, one more time, um, uh, pop this back up here for you here on my special edition, Matt Chat Live, our, our special Sunday edition. Uh, the commercial part, yeah, I just told you all those little things from my titles that are, you know, right down here. And some of those things are something that are uh, would be inspirational for you or something that would be helpful for you in your walk in your life. Uh, hit me up for sure. Um, you know, I don't get all preachy every time I'm on, on here, you know, and uh, nor would I be all the time uh, when we talk privately, uh, unless you ask. So um, if you need help in those areas, you won't find someone more dedicated to helping you than me. You won't. I promise you. And it just comes down to what you're willing to do. And if you're willing to uh, to to listen and apply some of the things that it takes to to see that transformation and breakthrough in your life. And not everybody is willing. And I'm not talking necessarily about a, a commitment to Jesus Christ. I'm talking about a commitment to to the what it takes to make it. And that's what coaching and consulting all those types of things are about, right? I call it discipleship. I mean, to me, everything's about being a disciple. And um, I hope that I can show you that I'm a good one. And as a result, that's something you would want to do yourself. Because I, again, am nobody. All I do is emulate and show who he is. The best of me is him. And I offer that to you. All right, my friends. Thanks again for being here with another special edition of uh, of Sunrise Sunday. It's been quite interesting and fun, I hope. And uh, let me see. <laughs>